If you've ever made a stacked bar chart in ggplot, you may have run into an issue where the text labels that you add go outside of the bars. What you're looking at here is a chart that shows the housing cost burden for renters in Hartford, Hartford County, and Connecticut. Take a look all the way on the right side in the not computed bars. See how those text labels go outside of the bars? That's not great. The chart that I just showed is a bad version of a real chart that we made for a set of reports on housing and demographic data in the state of Connecticut. What you're looking at now is the real charts. So you can see it's got housing cost burden both for renters and for owners. And take a look all the way at the right side at that not computed section. See what we did there? Instead of trying to fit the text label in and not having it work, we removed it altogether. In this video, I'll show you how to hide text labels with small values. This will help a lot to make your charts easier for your readers to comprehend. Okay, to make this work, I'm going to begin by loading the tidyverse. Then I'm going to load an RDS file that has the housing cost burden data that I need to make this plot. I'm going to pop up this housing cost burden data so we can take a look at it. You can see we've got location, the burden level, PCT for percent, and then PCT formatted, which is just a nicely formatted value that we can use to put on our bars. Next, I'm going to make a simple chart. So I'm taking housing cost burden, then I'm filtering, so location is one of Hartford, Hartford County, or Connecticut, and then I'm piping that into ggplot. You can see I'm setting my aesthetic properties, then I'm using gm call and gm text to add those text labels. So I'm going to run that. Let me pull this over slightly. Now you can see the chart that I've made here. Take a look at that not computed section. See how those text labels are just too big for the bars. Now, of course, one thing you might be thinking is, hey, you could just change size equals 10 to make it smaller. And I could, but that would be hard to read. So I want to keep the text really large, but I want to do it in a way that it's still legible. So now I'm going to add some styling to my chart. I've got all the same pieces here all the way down to GM text. But then below that, you can see I'm using scale fill manual to add the colors that I want. I'm using guide equals guide and legend reverse equals true to reverse the order of the legend because otherwise it doesn't match the bars. Scale X continuous is used to remove space around the uh, bars. Then I'm adjusting my labels, so removing the label on the fill uh, legend and then adding a title. And then I am making some tweaks to the theme, both adding theme void with a base size of 13 and a few tweaks in the theme function to make things look exactly the way I want them. I'll go ahead and run this and you can see there is my chart. Okay, so this looks very similar to what we saw before, but again, all the way on the right side, that not computed text label is outside of the bar, which isn't what we want. Now to continue, I'm going to actually turn the code that I just used into a function. So I've got housing cost burden plot. It takes three arguments, df for data frame, the town that we want to plot, and the county we want to plot. And you can see here I'm using df, I'm using the data frame, I've got town to plot, county to plot, and then we always, of course, want to keep Connecticut. Putting it into a function this way allows me to be flexible and show not just Hartford and Hartford County, but indeed any town and any county we want to. So I'm going to run this, and now I'm going to show you how we could use it. So I could say housing cost burden plot, df equals housing cost burden, the town we want to plot is Hartford, and the county we want to plot is Hartford County. So when I run that now, you can see I've got the exact same plot. Now if I want to remove small value text labels, the way to do it is actually not necessarily in ggplot. Instead, I'm going to do it through data wrangling. Over here, you can see I'm creating a new data frame called housing cost burden 2. I start with housing cost burden, and then I say mutate percent formatted equals if else. So if percent is greater than 0.07, so in other words, if it's greater than 7%, then keep the value PCT formatted. Otherwise, make it NA. Let me run this, and then let me pop up housing cost burden too. So you can see, for example, in line four, where we have Bethel, burden level is not computed, the percent is 0.385, so like 3.85%. So the value there for percent formatted now is blank. It's NA, which is what we want because watch what will happen. 
So now if I run this housing cost burden plot again, but change my data frame to housing cost burden two, watch what happens. Those values for the not computed go away. And I can use this for any town and county I want. I could do it for Stamford, and you can see those small values in the not computed section do not show up. Let me show you one more. This is plotting Woodstock, a town in Connecticut, and the county is Wyndham County. When I run this, see how severe burden for Woodstock is really small, and there's no value there. So this approach that we've taken works not just for the not computed tax labels. Instead, it works for any bar where the value is less than or equal to 7%. This idea of hiding text on small values works no matter what type of plot you use. We've done this, for example, with pie charts as well, and you can use it on any type of chart. It's a great way to ensure that your text is legible and that your users can comprehend what your charts are saying.